In 2020, the population of Russia stands at 145 million. In the last few years, the population has increased slightly, after the fast changes in the 1990s that led to a 15-year straight population loss. This development we covered in parts 1 and 2 in this series. This increase in the last few years has been the result of policy changes from the central government focusing on easing the immigration process. About 4 out of 5 inhabitants of Russia are of Russian ethnicity, a share that has, as a result of immigration from neighboring nations, as well as differences in fertility levels between population groups, been going down slowly in the last few decades. The immigration to Russia is dominated by other former Soviet Union member states in Eastern Europe, the Caucasus and Central Asia, with Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Azerbaijan and Belarus at the top. The foreign-born population of Russia in total follows a similar trend. Overall, even though the experience might be different depending on who you are and what skills you have, individuals residing in Russia for five years and who are acceptable Russian speakers are eligible for citizenship. If you qualify as a native speaker, a refugee, highly skilled in a specific field or have close family connections, the time might be shortened further. This is all a result of looser migration laws put in place by the Putin regime as a response to a loss of population in working age. If we look at the GDP per capita for Russia, we see that for four decades straight, from the 1950s and on, the numbers went up, rising from around 5,000 US dollars per person and year to over 20,000. Then after the fall of the Soviet Union, the economy went into free fall. Previously, publicly owned companies and resources privatized fast and were more often than not sold for a fraction of the actual value. Oligarchs with political connections enjoyed a highly concentrated spread of the equity and the process was heavily corrupted. Moscow today has the third most billionaires of any city in the world, trailing only New York and Hong Kong. At the same time, close to 15% of the Russian population lives below the line of poverty set by the government at around 150 US dollars per month. After the economic downturn in the 1990s, Russia had a solid economic growth up until 2014, when the development stalled. Helped by rising commodity prices and a global economic surge, the share of the population in Russia living in poverty were cut in half during this period. Tax reforms were put in place in the early 2000s, and Russia was admitted into the World Trade Organization in 2013. The rising political tension between Russia and the West following the annexation of Crimea in 2014 led to sanctions impacting the Russian export sectors hard. Since then, the Russian economy has reached stalemate, and the GDP per capita level has held steady at about 25,000 US dollars per year, about the same as Turkey and Kazakhstan, half of the levels of the United States and many nations in Western Europe, but ahead of other BRICS nations, China, India, Brazil and South Africa. One reason for the lack of economic development in the last decade is the fall in energy prices, the main export of Russia. Russia produces around 560 million tons of oil every year, about 12% of the total world production, falling short only of the US and Saudi Arabia. 670 billion cubic meters of natural gas, 17% of the total world production, only trailing the US. 440 million tons of coal, 5% of the world's total, or 6th in the world. Russia also produces a fair amount of nuclear and hydroelectric energy. Despite an increased focus on immigration, the population trends for Russia point downwards, and the UN median projection points to a population decline of about 20 million, or 14%, by the year 2100. This would put Russia at 126 million. If the fertility rate continues to be pushed down though, or if the economic difficulties continue, the low estimate of the UN, indicating a population of 83 million by 2100, could end up being a better prediction. This would mean a loss of over 40% of the Russian population in 80 years. Vladimir Putin has led Russia through shifting times. While Russia has established itself as a major player in the global economy, it has also since 2014 been more excluded 
and seen its importance fall. At the same time, as long as Russia has a permanent place in the United Nations Security Council, with full veto power over all actions of the UN, they are in position of controlling developments all over the world for their benefit. Something we have seen in the last few years in Libya and Syria, and as an active participator in the war in Georgia and Ukraine. The fall in energy prices, both caused by political efforts, as we have seen in 2020, and by a long-term shift towards renewables, will impact the Russian economy and force it to differentiate to stay alive. Meanwhile, Russia is seeing its population decline, with a smaller working force supporting a larger, older generation. This is the reality for most of the world in the coming century, and not specifically for Russia. Here Russia has shown more interest in solving the challenge with immigration, and other Eastern European states, both inside and outside the EU. But signs of xenophobia that could be ever more present if the ethnical composition of the nation changes is present in Russia as in many other parts of the world. A Russia after Putin is following the changes to the constitution in 2020, still most likely 16 years off. And whether the development before and after that is towards a more well-functioning democracy only time will tell.